Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. In studio today is a rare find, somebody I discovered through watching A&E's 60 Days In, Season 5 in particular. If you're not familiar with the show, this is a reality show where people volunteer to go to jail for 60 days. The premise is that they're going to get inside information that they can relate to the sheriff and the sheriff's right-hand man, the chief deputy. Guess who we've got in studio today? The chief deputy from season five, Pinal County, Arizona, Matthew Thomas. Welcome. How are you? I'm unbelievable. <laughs> Thanks for asking. You happy to be here? I am very happy to well, be let's here. Let's see if you say that an hour from now. <laughs> so you get an idea of what got me hooked on this guy and made me say, I want this guy in my life. Let's check out eight seconds from the season finale of 60 Days In on A&E. You are a badass. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I just kind of tell it like it is. Chief, can we say that guy pissed you off? Uh, yes, you can. He very much pissed me off. <laughs> and, and it was righteous. He, he didn't... Yeah, he was he was pushing all my buttons, and uh, he did not like me because I called him on his BS. And you you did, and, and rightly so. And I don't want you to think that that's, that's the chief in totality. After looking at that, I researched high and low, and what I mean is I called two of the people who worked for him and said, <laughs> who is that guy? Who's that chief deputy? I was directed to his Instagram. Uh, I, uh, he's like a kindred spirit to me. We both like mag dumps. We're both out there rocking that full auto. Yep. Uh, yeah, we do that 250, what is it, 50-round qualification every year. That's well and good, but once you've had one mag dump, you, I, I'm hooked. How about yeah. you? Oh, same for me. Yeah, and then if you go belt fed, it's even better. <laughs> oh yes, other people's money. That's right. <laughs> other people's <laughs> ammo. So what I learned while researching, I guess, is that uh, is that called stalking? No, I was looking through your <laughs> social media. Some things that came out right from the bat for me. Career peace officer. Yeah. One okay. agency. One agency. My whole career. Yep. Something we have in common. You were influenced by motors as a child. Yes, I was. Uh, yeah, I was. I think I told uh, Ben this story that the motors are some of the cops that I had interactions with as a kid. Yeah, I have, and I, I couldn't find them to bring you. <clears throat> motors for the same for me, but it was one motor in particular. Cleveland Police Richard Tansky, <laughs> six foot seven in Holy the days smokes. of wool coats with policemen. Remember wool yes. coats. <laughs> Full dress Harley that he took home. Oh. I learned so much about life from that guy and from motorcycles. What I learned about Harleys and police motorcycles were uh, put all the chrome on there you can, and yep. he did at his own expense. And if this is true or not, I don't know. Ben, you're a Harley guy. When Harleys sound perfect, it's right before they blow up. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty true. That's definitely true. <laughs> and I learned about. I think I read that in a book. <laughs> I learned about police work from him, community relations, rather. Because right. Shaker right. Square in Cleveland is the oldest shopping center in America, and that was his beat. Yep. On foot and on motor, and uh, the, those were crazy days in Cleveland. This is post riots, and those wool coats didn't have pockets. That's how you got your hand to your pistol. Yep. So pistol hand on one side, blackjack on the other. So are we on our twenty seventh year with the sheriff's office? Oh well, yeah. Wow. So uh, it's been and all, again all with the uh, the Pinal County Sheriff's Office, and uh, it's been it's been cool. That's amazing, and this is your first sheriff that you've worked as chief deputy for, correct? That is correct. Yes, I was a. Uh, I had worked my way up through the ranks. I actually started in the jail with uh, with our county, um, and then went out to the road as a deputy, and kind of worked my way through the ranks. I was a sergeant for a number of years and became a lieutenant. And uh, when Sheriff Lamb came in, I was still lieutenant, and he asked me to make the jump up to being his chief deputy. Outstanding. And for those of you that don't know, and I can't imagine the many that don't, the sheriff in Arizona is an elected position. Yep. Uh, the sheriff sets the tone, the timber, uh, and the morale, and the vision for the sheriff's office, which is hard to do. But what's even harder, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is implementing all of that. Yeah. And that falls to none other than the chief deputy. Yeah, that is correct. I, uh, I, he, he has the vision, the mission. He relays that to me, and uh, we get it done. So we're, we're doing the work of, of pushing his mission forward. And I don't live in Pinal County. I do come out there to shoot, but I, I'm, I drive too slow, so I'm not looking for any favors. And I want to pay you a compliment. I, I know several people who work for Pinal County, and when I'm out there, your deputies smile. Yeah. It reminds me of living in the South. Deputies wave at you. Right. Uh, they're also typing your play with the other <laughs> but, but I understand that. Uh, they're happy. 
they're smiling, and that's that that says a lot because you don't see that, right? Especially everywhere. in today's uh, today's world with the attitudes towards cops in general around the nation. Um, one thing we are dead set on is keeping our employees happy because if you look at it like a business um, and look at it as in the sense of customer service for our citizens, if our employees are 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 happy with their work, they're happy to come to work, they're going to treat the citizens better. They're going to treat our customers better. They're not going to have the bad attitudes. They're not going to have the burnout. And so we're trying to set up an environment to make that possible. How are you doing that, though? Letting them do their job, actually, and then backing them when they do do it. Because I think what's happening in the police world right now is that you have you get convicted by the media immediately, and then you have chiefs and sheriffs that will bend to that um, immediately rather than standing their ground and doing what they know is right, because doing the right thing is really hard in today's cop world, because that means that I have to stand up against the masses when one of our officers does something that they think is wrong. And so <clears throat> the stance we've taken is that with our employees specifically, when we talk to them, um, and it's not just cops, it's you know the whole agency, when we talk to them about making mistakes, it's that people are going to make mistakes in their jobs, especially when you're expected to make split, de- sec- split second decisions in a rapidly changing environment, you're going to make some mistakes. But what we tell our people is, as long as these aren't intentional mistakes, if, if you're not doing something that is immoral, illegal, unethical, and you're not doing it intentionally, we can work with that. Um, we'll talk about the mistake. We'll, you, you may have to pay a price for making that mistake, but it's not like we're going to send you down the river and uh, just you know hope for the best. We're going to back you. We're going to be there with you. And then also, I think what what hand in hand with that is allowing them to do their job, not dictating every little thing to them because we're so concerned with them doing something wrong. And uh, one thing that the sheriff and I have told when you talk to community leaders is like, look, we trust these people with guns and enforcing the constitution and upholding laws why would we not trust them to just do the things they're empowered to do it, you know there's no reason for us to get involved in their day-to-day work and dictate how they do that we we show them where we're going how we want to behave along that road and then just like kids we kind of push them on and let's go and if they get off course we correct their course but we keep going forward and they echo that and some of this thing you know everybody thinks it's about salary or about money or about time off. One of the things that I got back for, from the folks I talked to about you and the direction is the new uniform. Mm-hmm. Uh, these guys, younger folks that you've got working for, you don't know about numb hips. Right. They don't know about lower back injuries. You guys have allowed them to wear the external carrier. Mm-hmm. They're wearing a more comfortable pant. And they're, you know, they don't know what it's like, and you do, right. to get out of that car after eight hours and your right leg be numb. Or, so that little things like that do make a difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, some knew I was going to talk to you. Some didn't know. All spoke highly. They all feel the way you said you believe in your heart, that you and the sheriff believe that. And they also think that if they mess up, they might catch hell for it. But as long as they tell you the truth, right. that it's going to work. However work, however it's going to work, they just know that if they come forward to tell the truth, that's important. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest thing. As long as they own up to their mistake, um, we're going to work through it with them, not just send them on their own. And I think that makes the big difference because there there's some mistakes that you can't recover from. There's some people that are going to lose their career for the mistake that they made, but that doesn't mean we're going to just leave them on their own to lose their career. We're still going to be with them side by side and try and help them through that process. And if they have to leave, they have to leave. But for the most part, you know, people want to do good and, and our employees want to do good. We have to give them the tools. We have to give them the backing. And the tools is a big piece of it because um, coming up through the ranks, I understand all the no's and all the no's that I got coming up. And, um, you know, I also understand sometimes I would ask some self-serving stuff because you're trying to do some stuff for yourself. Um, And so I kind of get the games, too. And uh, what's odd for me now in this position is, uh, like with social media, a lot of these guys, including myself, you're you're trying to promote yourself and set yourself up to uh, your own little identity. And so we get that and we just we warn them that you have to be careful with that because it can be used against you um, if something happens, if something bad goes wrong. So we just try and give them all the parameters and give them the most information we can. 
Um, and honestly, I just, I really do look at it like parenting. Like I'm, tr I'm trying to take care of you guys. I'm trying to give you the best life you can have. I'm going to give you some advice, um, give you some guidance. And then it's really on you to, to do the job and do the work and be a good cop. <laughs> and it should be no surprise to anybody that follows me that I am prejudiced on behalf of deputies opposed to city police, it is <laughs> a... because we're real cops. That's right. And I'm going to get in trouble for this. This is not the chief deputy saying it, but I'm going to say it. Boys in blue, men in brown, or green, <laughs> depending on the combination of the uniform. A deputy sheriff, now your area is like the size of Connecticut. Yeah, 5,400 right. square miles. And so that's 124 sworn? No. Uh, we have 216 sworn. 216 sworn. Ooh. I have got... Ben, our neighbor... To the east of us, yes, sir, is 580 acres with 230 sworn. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. there's a big difference. We ask, say it, spread a little thin is what you're trying to exactly. say. Exactly. Yeah. We ask a deputy sheriff, in my opinion, to be a lot of things: a parent mm -hmm. to those who haven't been parented properly to teach skills, uh, to be a medic in some cases, to be an arbitrator, to be an educator, to do all these things, and to do it remotely. Uh, average response time. I'm a deputy. I work for you. I ask for help. Who's going to get there first? Is it going to be DPS? Going to be tribal police? Or is it going to be one of your guys? Uh, it really depends on the area. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it could be any of those, uh, depending on where they're at. It could be one of our people. It could be a tribal. It could be uh, state cops. Um, it, it could be city cops in in some places. They're going to be the closest. And people don't realize what that's a, that puts a lot on that deputy. That deputy has to be trained. Mm -hmm. He's going to be able to handle his shit. And I'm going to, yeah, I cursed. I did it. I said it. <laughs> uh -oh. I broke. Uh, on the, I broke. I didn't mean uh, to do that. I don't that. know if you know this, but I never curse. I know you, <laughs> you, you never have. But remember, we just watched that 10 seconds from the show earlier. Yeah. So. Uh, deputies have it hard. Yeah, they do. Uh, you have it hard because you have got, I want to say, for a better word, customer or an audience, you've got the sheriff. Mm-hmm. And you guys have a great working relationship. Yep. Uh, you have your rank and file. Yep. Uh, you've got the detention folks. Yep. You've got the county board of supervisors, <laughs> yeah. right? So, uh, you know, Pinal County brings in $2.3 in agriculture. So meaning if you're west of the Mississippi and you ate something green in the last 12 months, it was probably grown in Pinal County mm -hmm. or one of the farms here in Arizona. You don't get that $2.3 do you? No. No, we don't. Um, and we, we do okay. For, for what we have, um, and like with all the, the different aspects that you're talking about, like the Board of Supervisors, um, I could tell you like our relationship with them, night and day difference from the past. And uh, Good. Um, and it's, it's because um, when the sheriff came in and, and why I jumped on board with him is because I knew it was the right direction to head and his, his mission and his vision, I was like, dude, finally, somebody that, that gets it. Uh, because as a lower rank, as a lieutenant working in a command staff, you're trying to get things accomplished. And if your staff above you, your captains, your chiefs, your sheriff, if they're not on the same page, man, you have to work a lot of back channels to get stuff done. And so as a SWAT lieutenant, that was my last assignment was over SWAT narcs and uh, our anti-smuggling. There's a lot of equipment needs for those units. So you're asking for money all the time. So and in comparison, I don't mean to interrupt no. you, but in comparison to another agency in the state, mm -hmm. how many deputy chiefs do you have? I have two. I two. have one over sworn and one over the jail. We have an agency that has 23 Holy <laughs> deputy chiefs <laughs> under a chief deputy. So do you have all the employees, do you have all the, de the deputies you want? No, no, not by any means. We, I, I mean, honestly, we would love to double our numbers. I'd, I'd love to have 400 sworn. Um, is that going to is, the problems we have are never going to go away? So we could we could hire twelve hundred deputies, and we're still going to have the same amount of problems. We're just going to have better response time and, and uh, be able to better place. We are spread thin now. Our population is growing. Um, the good thing is we have we have a board and we have county management that understands that, and uh, and we are now all working together on what the future looks like. So the, the, the horizon looks really good for our agency. Um, and I think we're just, we're in growing pains right now um, in a sense of population is booming. Uh, we're at the same staff we've had for a while, um, but I think we're on the verge of, of changing a lot of that.